Welcome to this introductory tutorial on algorithms. This is the first tutorial in a series addressing algorithms to develop computational thinking and look at different design tools to help new programmers break down complex problems into structures that computers will be able to understand. For those that may be studying the Australian curriculum, this will apply to two of those units. So what is an algorithm? An algorithm is a sequence of steps that when followed leads to a solution of a problem. An algorithm will have a defined set of inputs, a process to follow to achieve an output. So why input processing and output? Well, that's a very good question. The main reason for this is the computer model. When we think of a computer, we think of it as something that takes an input from a user, it then processes the input from the user, and then it outputs that information back to the user. So we see this as a model of the input going to processing, the processing being completed, and then the information being passed back to the user as an output. This model also has storage in it. So the computer model while processing may engage with a database or you may be required to store the information for a time. So you can actually retrieve that to output that to the user. So the model also has a storage facility. And since 1995 and the advent of the internet, we also added the communication module to this model. Therefore, when a computer is processing data, it may need to communicate with the internet to retrieve more data, it may need to go back to the user to retrieve more information, it may need to use its storage or interface with databases that are on the computer to produce the information required to present back to the user. So the input processing output really reflects what a computer does. We talk about input taking in the data required. So this input may be from a keyboard, could be from a mouse click, it could be coming from a file that's been supplied to the computer, either through a communication channel from the internet or retrieved off its internal hard drive. The processing is where algorithms are applied and it converts that data into what we would call information. So a computer will take the data from the user, process that using algorithms to create information by presenting the information back to the user. So what we're trying to develop is what's called our computational thinking. And we have some design thinking tools that will help us do this. There are four main ones that I'll be looking at. Flowchart, pseudocode, structure charts, and mind maps. These are four design thinking tools. They're not the only tools that are used in industry, but they're the four that I use in my classroom and I teach my students and I use with new programmers. So design thinking tools are basic arithmetic design thinking tools. So it helps us break a problem down into steps. The main reason for using a design thinking tool is to help us as developers create a blueprint to be translated later into syntax by a coder. You may be the software engineer who does the design thinking and creates the blueprints, or you may be the coder that's receiving a blueprint to turn into a syntactical language. This could be C Sharp, C Plus, Java, Python, and these blueprints will be either a flowchart, pseudocode, structure chart, or a mind map. So what do these algorithmic design thinking tools help us do? Well, they help us in three ways. They help us with decomposition, abstraction, and pattern recognition. Decomposition is where we break down a difficult problem into more manageable pieces. So we look at something that is complex and think about how the computer is gonna process this information. What inputs are required, what steps are required by the computer to achieve the outcome the user would like. Abstraction is about the level of detail that you consider and are required to give to the programmer at the end. The programmers use the design tools as a guide to developing the syntactical code. So we need to supply the programmers with enough information to enable them to achieve the outcome that we like. We can micromanage by breaking the problem down too far or we may not give them enough information and we don't achieve the outcome that we really required. So abstraction is about the level of detail you need to break a problem down to, to enable the computer to process the data and produce the information that you require. Pattern recognition is about identifying parts of the problems that are similar or have been tackled before and grouping them together. 
therefore not having to repeat code or do tasks over and over and over again and therefore coding it multiple times. So where to start? In the next tutorial, we'll use a flowchart to look at pattern recognition, how we can take a problem and extract it down to an appropriate level for a programmer. And we'll take problems and decompose them and break them into manageable processing steps. So well done on starting your programming journey. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and also have a look around my channel for other useful programming tutorials, and also the next tutorial in our algorithmic journey.